Hello, welcome back to the Grey Cricketer, brought to you by Akko, India's tech first insurance company. Thank God that last hour happened because, oh my God, I was about to end it all. <laughs> oh, Pakistan, you've done it again. Uh, Sam Perry. Boy, uh, things really escalated quickly there, huh? Kind of got out of hand. <clears throat> well, you know, I'm only saying this because I want to see your face redden and annoy you further, but that's just test cricket, man. Um, you know, 12 days in the dirt, 12, 12 and a half days in the dirt. It's all connected, brother. You've got to do that, you know, without the struggle, you don't have the good shit. I think that's what... Um, that's what uh, Moses said. And uh, that was Moses. That was Moses. Without the struggle, you don't have the good shit. That was in the Old Testament. So we were, we were, were, we were rewarded. Uh, Australia was rewarded. And, uh, you know, I spent the day thinking, hey, why, why have these pictures been like this? What are the deeper social, cultural, political forces that have led to these really dry, dead wickets? Uh, I think that like incidents of getting cricket back on in Pakistan is more important than just one series between Australia and Pakistan. I don't think they necessarily have an obligation to like make it scintillating at all costs and times. But I'm wondering like what is the and it's okay to have a bit of gnarly cricket. I think. But like, what are the th like? Ramiz Raja had, has talked about ordering kind of wickets like this, and it sort of led me to think it, it it obviously has been very very important that Pakistan don't lose. I don't know what those factors are. Is it a is it a credibility thing on the world stage? Is it respect? Uh, is it like we we cannot have calamity, and let's just lean it towards some dour stuff if we need to to make them go the five days let's let everyone know that test cricket's on and if we need some dead pitches to do that then so be it uh and then you know as cummins and stark tore through them i thought take that rummies you know you can you can, <laughs> you can you can take away the deck but you can't take away the reverse and i'm one of those people mate who's sort of like look i just know when it starts to reverse a little bit i i, I start to say things like i start to say things like oh there's a hint of reverse there there's a little bit of reverse there and, oh, there's barely detectable reverse there oh, i'd bring stark on now stark is absolutely nothing for four years and then he was him for a couple of sessions <laughs> and that's when i know to sort of bring him on uh that's me mate <laughs> Yeah, I know, mate, mate. Um, unlike uh, everyone else on the internet, I don't know how to make a cricket wicket. I don't know anything about pitches. I don't know about anything about the climate uh, in India. And I am talking politically now. Uh, and, and by India, I mean, of course, Pakistan. I'm sure no one's going to let me make that mistake. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, easy oh, to that's mix perfect, up. That's perfect, actually. That's perfect. Yeah, um, it's just that, like, when... When test matches have been played in Pakistan before this this series, um, that these wicket, the wickets have not been nearly as bad, in my opinion, as these ones have been. Let's let's get into three things, though, mate. Um, um, Pakistan lose eight for fifty four. They lost seven for twenty. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm the same as you, man. I thought mm, it's it's starting to go. Um, but like, I mean, they're starting to go, and then there's fucking eight for fifty. How can you be two for a hundred? Uh, two for two hundred and fourteen. All out 268. I mean, fucking hell. I mean, so, like some of the bowling was exceptional, as was Nazim Shah the day before. But um, oh, didn't say didn't see that coming. There was no evidence that anything was going to turn like that. And then um, uh, I guess it did. And Cummins five for fifty six. I thought Stark was Cummins gets the bag. Um, but but Stark four for uh, four for like thirty. What is it? Four for four for thirty three off twenty. Fuck, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's that's fucking pretty good. He gets he gets a bit of the tail there in the end. He's just, he looked unplayable. Ball he, get, ball he gets uh, Rizwan with. Oh my yeah. god. Um, and it sort of started before then to, to pair him with Cummins as well. Cummins is caught at C and B off um, Azir Ali. Oh, that is that's up there with like some of the best caught and bowls you'll see. Uh, the, just the athleticism. Mate. There are so many good bowls across the world. Like rankings mean nothing. But fuck me, Cummins is up there with like the best cricketer in the world at the moment. Like, Mate, it fuck, wasn't just so it good. wasn't just the caught and bowled, which I do know some people chose to use that moment to dispute the application of the laws there from Cummins. 
Um, oh my god! But I don't know. I just I just grimace. But uh, yeah, it, it was the the timing of that. Like when he did it, that was mm. that was fucking that was captaincy stuff. That was love. That was mm. sheer love. Uh, and Martin Love. It, it was Martin Love. It was Martin Love stuff. And that was you know it, Pakistan still batted on a fair bit before that. He 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 really earned that wicket, and it was a great catch to boot. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I mean to your point, I, I think if you are two for two fifty or whatever it is, and then you lose whatever they did or two for two two twenty. It can only mean that it, it truly was bad girls. You know, when they're good, they're very good. But when of they're course, bad, yeah. they're sensational. And, and <laughs> Cummins and Stark were bad, you know, uh, in that moment. Once the, the, reverse, yeah. the reverse was too much. Mm, which is different to when Steve Smith was stuck at a lift and Marnus gave him some M&Ms. And that, that, at that moment, was actually naughty, uh, which is a separate... Uh, th- it was a sort of a third element to, to, to bad girls. Um, Pez, uh, I want to ask you a question to the, moving to the second thing. Um, do we need to talk about Nathan Lyon? Now, I've got this in the in the agenda today because I've just seen some chat online where, you know, he, he's only taken X wickets in, in, in X deliveries and it's meant, to, it's meant to mean something. I'm very reticent to know what any of this series means and I include that with runs because it's just runs galore. No hundreds in this game so far, which is weird. But, but I think Lyon's actually bowled Okay, I, I thought I thought he's bowled like he maybe hasn't bowled the Jaffers, but I'm looking at Pakistan's attack as well. And it's like, well, I mean, I know I know Norman Ali got uh, you know six for in that game, I guess. Um, or no, no, he did. Um, but you know, I, I think he's doing okay. You, you know, I think there might, there probably has been a drop off in the the like his his role generally, like not just this series, but, you know, for the last probably 12 months beforehand against India in, in 2020, in the Ashes even perhaps as well. He's looked, he's looked a little bit benign, I suppose, but I still think he's doing a pretty good job. He's about 40 overs today, about 55 in the last innings in the last test match, and he's only got a few poles. But to me, he's still bowling okay, but maybe the Australian cricket team should aspire to something more than okay. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I still think he's a good bowler. What do you think? Uh, man, I think that's a that's a pretty good analysis. Like, I, I I just think that the way our brains work in Australia is, if you've played that many tests and taken that many wickets, that like the, like, consequently that person must be extremely good. And then when you see Nathan Lyon, sometimes you're like, is it is it is it as is it as good uh, as the longevity uh, suggests, and. I think part of it, like if you want to be, uh, like if you want to black hat it a little bit, is is about the system behind Australian spin bowling. There's not a lot, there's not a lot behind him, not a lot challenging him. Swepson's the first guy we've seen compared to him, and uh, you know, in in a game together, and you know, Lions taken more wickets than Swepson when they've played together, you know, since they've started playing together yeah. in Test matches, so. Uh, there's not a whole heap behind him, and I think that's more of a it's a system question. But he's the, he's the I'm not saying he's the best of a bad bunch, but he's 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 a very good bowler in probably a mediocre bunch, and that's a very systemic issue in Australian cricket. I, and I mm. think that it is fair to ask questions. They do get onto deck sometimes where it would be handy if an Australian spinner actually like got one to grip. A bit more often, you know, and like there's <laughs> mm. way more subtlety that goes on, and he does all the he does great roles. I feel like we've made really good points around that and understood the real benefit of Nathan Lyon, particularly at home. You can't understand the quicks if yeah. you don't understand Lyon, vice versa, and all that sort of stuff. It's just sometimes when you know it, it's your you're the star in the show. Uh, you it, it's nice if you can deliver, but. Um, Mm. I think Pakistan spinners have been ordinary too, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, same, same. I mean, you, you sort, of, you sort of think that you fancy that if, like, if Ashwin, for instance, is buying, he might just get a bit more out of it somehow. Maybe he mm. wouldn't, but you just feel that way. But at the same time, look, Cummins and Stark take nine for nine for seventy. I mean, uh, nine for eighty. That their combined figures nine for eighty nine um, off forty four overs, and Lion bowls forty overs. <laughs> so, in many, I'm not saying like I'm not saying. Um, Stark and, and Cummins are getting his wickets, but he does fit into the attack where, like, he is he is economical. That he's, he's gone for two point three and over in his forty overs. 
he's still giving the opportunities for the other guys to get wickets. So he, he does sort of fit in and... He is still a test match quality bowler, but mm. uh, you know you just you, you still kind of want ma maybe it's Warren stuff, maybe it's other other country spinners, maybe. Mate, I, um, I just, I just think is any other country spinner doing it? Uh, okay, I don't know but if they are diff different countries. I mean, I guess you uh, know, India has this. India Ajaz has, Patel got ten for I guess. <laughs> India has fifteen thousand spinners. New Zealand have Ajaz yeah. Patel. Uh, and I can't mm. remember anyone else that plays cricket at this point in time. I just think South that Africa's in, Maharaj. Yeah, in a, I just think in Australia you you just want someone who's world class or might be world class in every position, you know. And um, mm. Mm. Nathan Lyon just might be slightly below that. And for adults, that's okay, <laughs> you know. It 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 pretty <laughs> pretty much works. Mm. Um, okay, Pez, last thing. Uh, are we looking at nil-nil? Now, I know Australia have come from absolutely nowhere here to, to, to get up uh, to an enormous advantage here. They're leading by about 130 or something heading into day four. It's now probably a question of like how long is enough to bowl out the opposition whilst trying to get as many runs on the board because I, I, <laughs> I think this wicket has more in it um, for the bowlers than the last two pitches have. So mm. I don't think necessarily that um, Pakistan can get 400, say. But can Australia score quickly enough to score, what would that be, 270 more runs in this innings in a day to then give themselves... Well, they're gonna, I think they'll need more than a day to bowl out Pakistan, probably. It's going to go into day five. Um, so I guess I, I still fancy the draw because I still feel like if, if a team is trying to block the shit out of it, I think it's going to be even harder to get wickets. <laughs> um, because up until... Up until this final session today, I think Pakistan's plan was probably we're going to bat once and then try and make Australia bat on the last day to try and save the game. That was probably their their, their play as well because they were going about two and a half and over, 2.3 and over for the whole innings as well. So um, I guess a broader qu – two questions, Pez, to you, if I can put them to you. Is the draw still the favourite and how many runs uh, do Australia – can Australia play with here? Um. Mate, I, I don't think a draw's a favourite. I think the match has sprung to life, you know. It, it's it's sped up massively. Australia's 120 ahead mm -hmm. and there's 180 overs to go. Uh, but the only thing that um, the only thing that counters it is that, uh, you know, it, we saw in Karachi, Australia bowled him out for 140 after making 500-odd. And, and you you make this calculation in your head where, like, well, if, if they knocked him over for that many in the first innings, then the the deck must be doing a bit. And then in the second innings, Pakistan scored mm. 8,050. So is it the mm. batch of balls? Like, I mean, really, Australia's only periods of taking wickets have been when the ball's reversed. And I don't know if anyone, mm. like, that. they kind of semi-understand the science of it. I think Pakistan's bowling innings to Australia will reveal a lot. I mean, you say it could go into the, it could it could be a draw. It could be over tomorrow. You know, like, it, could, it, it actually, the, the deck could mm. just completely break up. Pakistan could get their reverse as well and it could just be a complete shootout. So I actually think it's sprung to life and it's really interesting. And I think on top of that, like, even if Australia got a draw, you know, goldfish brain stuff, it'll be, a, I think it'll be framed rightly as a grizzled, um, you know, four-day beard growth, hard-nosed nil-all draw in Asia where you don't get a lot of good results over there. Done on the back of, like, disciplined cricket where they stayed together. I also think that like the fact that the mm. matches open up for Australia is a little bit of a reward for how together they've stayed during this time. Maybe I'm overlaying too much narrative. You know, Australian teams of old just fucking lose the plot when stuff they get indignant when stuff just gets really boring or the wickets or they feel like they've been stitched up by a wicket. I don't know if the previous coach would have helped or hindered that kind of stuff as well. Uh, but I think they've just stayed really calm. They've come into the match now and they know that they've got a little opening. It's a great opportunity for Warner to get some quick runs and see what they can do and uh, have a dart at them to see if they can win. You know, I, I, I think there'll be a result. Uh, I, I, do, I do think there'll be a result, but, um, you know, it doesn't rule out the draw because look at what's fucking happened before. Sorry. Result. <laughs> uh, hashtag AskTGC brought to you by Akko. This one comes in via Patreon, Sam Perry from Stokesy's Fire Salad. Hashtag AskTGC. To celebrate the summer of love, and more appropriately, he goes low body fat percentage, snog, shag, marry, and avoid this top four. Coley, Smith, Root, and, he's binned Kane here, Baba. 
both in the context of a warming relationship partner and a cricketer. Hashtag okay. Metro. Two things before we start. Um, were you happy with your low body fat percentage in the summer? Were you happy with your body fat percentage? I mean, I think it's always low regardless, but is that a fair point? Was it for you? Uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm probably – I'll lean out for winter like a goose. Okay. Um, and just, just to clarify as well, Coley, Smith, Root, and Bubba, uh, that's Graham Smith. Yeah. That's Graham so Smith, from. right? Graham Smith and his back. Graham Smith, Graham yeah. Smith, Graham Smith, we'll yeah, and his big old back. Um, okay, I haven't yeah. thought about this. Uh, I will um, I will marry Joe Root. Yep. I will avoid Steve Smith. Yeah, I'd go the same. Uh, I would... I would... I, I would kiss Bubba and I would fuck Coley. <laughs> I had the same one. I had the same one. Although I did think about marrying Coley and then um, shagging Joe Root. Uh, but that's just a blonde thing for me. Um, so, yeah, keep that in mind. Let us know which, what you would have done in the comments below. 